to see the blizzard. Departing from a souvenir boom. I crammed the first 26 hours of traveling from Bangkok to New York into 26 seconds of video because this is not a video about New York. It's just the first of uh, many stops on my trip uh, around the world. So I'm only here in New York for a short while. Now, I did visit my family, went to a Broadway play with my family from Brooklyn and then out to nearby Pennsylvania. And we spent Christmas morning with my other daughter and her family. It's been a lovely trip. And I was trying to think of something that would be representative of New York. So I took you all here to Grand Central Station where I'm going to tell you a very New York story. In 1973, I believe, it was in the 70s, 1970s, this beautiful building was in danger of being uh, torn down and, and replaced with a big office building. And a consortium of people led by Jacqueline Kennedy, the uh, former first lady of the United States, widow of uh, John F. Kennedy, uh, led a consortium of people to save the building and they renovated the building. And part of the renovation was to clean this amazing ceiling, which is a representation of constellations of the galaxy. It was covered in soot because at one time diesel trains used to come in to the lower part of this terminal pulling trains and the diesel smoke rose up to the top and stained the ceiling. It was a gargantuan job to clean the ceiling and make it the beautiful display that it is today. And in memory of that effort, they left a little dark spot right up there. So that little patch of soot is a vestige of how the whole ceiling looked prior to the 1970s renovation. And I just thought that that was a nice little New York story to pass on to you. So for me, the interesting part of this video is not about New York City. It's going to begin on a train. But the train that I'm about to board is not leaving from Grand Central Station. It's leaving from here in Chicago at Chicago's Union Station. A lot's gone on in between uh, the last clip and this one. And I'll bring you up to date as we travel from here to Emeryville, California. It's a suburb of San Francisco. I'm taking the Amtrak um, California Zephyr. That's um, Amtrak's signature route from uh, Chicago to the West Coast. I'm looking forward to the trip. But I wanted to give you a, a shot here of Union Station where it was my plan to compare it with Grand Central Station and have Grand Central Station win, hands down, just as being a much more beautiful building. But guess what? This is a pretty nice place. I mean, it has, you know, nice polished marble floors. It's a great big cavernous atrium. Uh, well kept. I like some of the appointments here. The uh, very intricate and a little bit ornate lamps that they have placed around the station. Uh, brilliant marble columns supporting uh, an intricate ceiling over the grand staircase coming in from Canal Street. It's a nice building. But I'm still going to give the win to Grand Central. And I think the difference with Grand Central is that magnificent ceiling that I pointed out to you with the uh, constellations uh, depicted on the ceiling of Grand Central Station. So I'm still going to put uh, Union Station here in second place, but we're going to make it a close second. It is a, a, a pretty impressive building as well. Uh, back in the old days of, uh, of rail travel, they did put a lot of effort into designing and building these places, at least in the big cities. 
The building itself is uh, substantial and pretty impressive, and it's in the shadow of what was once known as the Sears Tower. This is the tallest building in the world for a while. It's uh, certainly uh, up into the clouds today. Sears has long since gone out of business. I'm gonna have to look up what they call it today. I'm sure they've renamed it. But it's a great big building, stuck up in the clouds there. You can see the writing on the pavement. <laughs> yeah, one of the things I like about making videos um, spontaneously as possible is that when you point the camera at a subject, very often the subject changes the story, even when the subject is me. And that's what happened here. Now that little train wreck clip I threw in was a little bit overkill, but my expectations for the ride on the California Zephyr from Chicago to San Francisco were very high. I had watched a video uh, by a guy by the name of Jeb Brooks, who was a very good video maker, very articulate, uh, in, in, well informed. And he's a train buff. He made it look like the greatest thing since mom's apple pie. And it turned out to be far from that in my experience. There's so much to complain about that I'm making a whole separate video about my experience on the California Zephyr. And I will put that up in the box that comes at the end here. Turns out that what I expected to be the uh, one of the high points of this whole round the world trip turned out to be just the opposite. But, hey, I'm a big boy. you got to roll with the punches. I'm in uh, the Hilton Hotel at LAX Airport. Uh, I had expected to be in the Philippines by now. But because of a health issue, I had a gout outbreak from the crappy food on the, on the California Zephyr. I had to take three days and rest. And that's what I've been doing here at the Hilton. And I'm going to wrap this video up from here. Like I said, I expected it to be a whole different thing with a happy ending in the Philippines. But that's not the way it all worked out. Here I am at LAX. One of the things I'll say about traveling old guys like myself, there are a lot of us around the world, expats who are retired and, you know, like to travel to Asia especially. And that's what I'm going to do a few videos on when I get to Dumaguete in the Philippines. That's my my, my objective to go to Dumaguete. And a lot, of, uh, a lot of people that watch my videos will know a lot of the YouTube creators that are in Dumaguete. They're very successful. Uh, Paul of Old Dog New Tricks and uh, Mark Thornton on uh, Every Man Has a Story. I'm hoping to meet up with them and, you know, and hang around where they're, where they're known to congregate and perhaps run into them and have a conversation. I'm looking forward to it. And, and I want to do stories about guys like me, expats who are drawn to that area. And I, I'm not going to live there. I, I, I love my life in, in Bangkok, which I will ultimately ultimately go home to. But I do want to spend some time in Dumaguete and, you know, maybe write a story, do some videos, and I hope to be there by now, but I'm not, you know, and that's because I had this little health issue. And I guess one of the, the, you know, the lessons learned here is that if you're going to be an old guy traveling expat running around the world, you need to have the resources to do it. I mean, I found myself in LAX having to be wheeled through the airport in a wheelchair uh, to, to uh, the, the Hilton Hotel shuttle van that brought me here. And they put me in a wheelchair at the Hilton too and they saw how I was trying to walk. And they got me to my room where I've been very comfortable uh, and, and uh, able to rest and let my foot heal and get back to normal, which it almost is. It's, it's on its way there. By the time I fly tomorrow, I think I will be able to walk normally. Uh, but gout, for anybody that knows about it, is a very painful form of arthritis. It's basically an old guy issue. And I, you know, I had the resources to deal with it, where I could buy an extra three nights in an expensive hotel and eat from room service. That's because I have an emergency fund for emergencies. And uh, you know, so I guess that's my recommendation to, uh, to expats looking to travel. Have an emergency fund, because you never know what's going to happen and where you're going to find yourself. Here I am in L.A., where I don't really know anybody. I, there are a few yoga people I could probably dig up from uh, my, my yoga days. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't want to be a burden on anybody either. I want to be able to take care of myself, and, and I've been able to do that. So set yourself up to do that. So, you know, thanks for watching. I'm sorry this video turned out the way that it did, but, you know, I'd rather be authentic 
than make up stories. I don't want to just pop up in Manila and say, hey, everything's cool. And I especially want to do a critique on that California Zephyr Amtrak train because Amtrak is not what some of these video makers are cracking it up to be. A lot of the people that make videos about Amtrak are train buffs. And you know what the crew on the Amtrak train call them? They call them foamers because they foam with the mouth when they're seeing, when they ever, whenever they see a train. I think that's a little harsh, but you know, they're train buffs and they see the good, the, the, the trains can do no wrong. Well, yeah, they can, especially Amtrak. Amtrak is a state owned enterprise or partially owned by the states, the United States, and it's a government funded thing and it's inefficient as all get out. And a lot of the problems that I will talk about in the video that I make about that are, are a result of that inefficiency. You know, I understand there was snow in the Sierra Nevada mountains and that could cause issues, but for a train that regularly travels through the Sierra Nevada mountains in the winter time, they could have been better prepared to deal with the problems. You know, a couple of hours delay would have been okay. 11 hours was not okay. There were other issues. Watch the video if you're interested. Thanks for watching. I'm doing okay. I'm on my way to Manila tomorrow. Then I'll stop making videos when I land in Dumaguete. Thanks for watching.